What has this bike got to do with the test of the Cervelo S5? Pretty little, other than the fact that this is what I've been used to riding for the last year. It's um, served me very well. The only similarity really with this and the new Cervelo is that it's got red E-tap. So I'm completely used to the shifting system. This is the rim brake edition of the hood. In other words, it doesn't have any of the hydraulics. And uh, so it's a different reach, a different uh, girth, and uh, basically a different feel, even if the shifting mechanism is the same. Uh, and then finally, the touch point here is different, significantly different. My traditional old uh, zip bars are just rounded. They're 31.8mm, um, traditional stem. We're going to see a massive difference when we consider the cockpit. This is seriously the first moment that I'm going to step on the bike and I thought I'd just capture my impressions. But really it's in the first few minutes that you notice the biggest discrepancies from one bike to the next. I've got a pretty nice bike and I'm looking forward to see how she handles. So that's the introductions out of the way, I think it's time to ride. Ready to go. Let's see if she lives up to the expectations because there's a lot of expectation on this bike. with my scripted sunglasses and of course my Sony action cam mount uh, but it's not exactly aero even if she is bright but for this test given that it's an aero bike I thought I'd take a new Bolle helmet which uh, currently is all in its aero configuration but in a minute it'll be in its cool down variant Just for a little bit of uh, background, I took this bike home from the workshop at Park Bikes, wheeled it in the door and had an immediate reaction from the two kids. I've got an eight-year-old and a 13-year-old. They've seen all sorts of bikes pass through our house. They don't really flinch at uh, the sight of a new one anymore. But when they saw the Cervelo S5, they were stopped in their tracks. Ultimately, it was summarized with the universal term, cool, dad. As I was walking by last night, I couldn't help but feel compelled to do the usual, throw the leg over, just check the brakes are working with the traditional squeeze of the brake while you're sitting idle and going nowhere. And then I realised everything's different because of the cockpit. You've got your hand positions which are pretty traditional here. You have tops, hoods, drops, we all understand that. But with the, without the centre stem, I realised last night there's a whole new hand position. The tops, hoods, drops. That's traditional, but really, I feel like I'm going to be here. Cool. Haven't pedaled a stroke in anger, but I reckon that that's a position I'm going to end up finding myself in. Before I even get started, I'm going to tell you the hoods are different, but I don't notice the difference. They, they still feel they're pretty good. This is literally the first 50 metres of rolling around with the hydraulic version. And uh, I am familiar with the other ones, but they, my hands just fall into spot here. And, and I, it's worth referencing because a big part of the thing is being comfortable on the hoods. There's definitely surety in, in the hand position here. Uh, the levers have gotten bigger by virtue of the need for the hydraulic system. Um, and my first impression on touching these is that the variation between the other SRAM and these is actually negligible. I have to 
laugh. I thought when I first got on, oh my lord, this is so different to my bike. It's going to take me ages to get used to it. I've literally rolled 100 metres here, 100 metres there, just going up and down, just getting used to the position of the bike. And just coming in now, I'm, I'm almost familiar with it. It's literally taken a couple of minutes. It's early days, but I'm quite surprised from the first minute to the fifth minute, there's a significant difference in familiarity with this bike. As happens, a few hundred metres turned into a few kilometres. I've been out and back into the park. There's a little dipper and a couple of speed bumps and a couple of turns and a bit of twisting. And basically the opportunity to get a little bit familiar with the bike. I will say I'm surprised how quick I'm getting up to 40k an hour and I'm not really putting in a lot of effort. I haven't hit the big ring yet. We've got a 36 on the inner ring and a 52 for the outer for the big ring on the front. This is just an opportunity to take my initial impressions upon having done a few k's on the bike. Other things that I notice when I ride bikes for the first time and I'll just demonstrate. I go a little bit knock kneed that is to say, I ride a little bit like Andy Schleck. <laughs> Not with the winning ability, but with the knees coming in. And sometimes on some bikes, I do find my, I'm brushing the top tube a little bit. I, if I really exaggerate, I can come in and do it. But I know from hours on Zwift and from looking down and seeing how perilously close my legs go to the top tube of my Focus KO, I was going to be aware of that because on the trek in Monda, for example, she flares a little bit as it comes to the back and I, I, I did just touch my knees on the top tube. With this one, there's no issue at all, no issue whatsoever. So that's just the really early days of the first impressions of this ride. Just to repeat the point, this was just a pool around to get used to the bike and within a couple of minutes I was used to it. So um, as expected I found my hands sort of being gra gravitating towards the central position when I was just in the cruise mode. There is a little bit of carbon settling in at the front. I can't isolate exactly what it is and for more rides are going to help me determine what that cause is if it's going to settle upon uh, a little bit of uh, wearing in. I want to do this. I don't know if my microphone from the lapel will pick it up, but listen to this. And the point being there that there's no internal rattle. So the cables are secured. Listen. All you can hear are the pedals jiggling. There's no cable rattle. And this is a critical point because at this level when you've got internals like you have, and there's only the, um, the hydraulic cables for the, for the disc brakes. So there's nothing that's really tangling around inside. Another thing was, once I started riding and I got down in the drops and I started to think about my position, I realised I was just that little bit lower than I am on my usual bike, so it's another centimetre lower. We determined that at the build. We were going to do that anyway. And then suddenly I started thinking, it does feel a little bit like a time trial bike. She's a very slippery bike, it feels fast. It didn't take long to get up the speed, but she's a road bike through and through, and the way she went around corners and everything, it, it all felt very intuitive at the beginning. But it was only getting up the speed that I started thinking that there's a little bit time trial-esque about the frame. I really can't wait till I've had a good, long, uninterrupted, uh, no turnaround, no camera posing, just a simple, unadulterated ride to test how she really goes around through corners and everything and then I'll know a little bit more. It deserves a lot of attention, it's received a lot of attention and it's going to get much more attention and I do think that it's going to be mimicked quite a bit in the future. What we also need to bear in mind, and I'll just demonstrate for the camera, is because it's not our steering column per se, you do have a limit to the turning and that's it there. But in packing and little things where you're used to turning the handlebars a lot more, you need to be wary because the last thing you want to do is come and damage this lovely finish of carbon here. You can see just what it looks like when you're turning. 
that stack, this little bit here, is what we've added so that it fits my position a little bit better. And if we bring it back here, you can see the rise that I've added, but normally that would be a seamless integration down to the top tube and it's a very attractive looking bike for the purpose of this video. That's my quick little appraisal after the first adventure on the Cervelo S5.